Welcome back to Sunday League Football, where it's the reverse tie of the greatest ever Sunday League football match you've ever seen. You might not have seen it. 96,000 people saw it. If you're not one of them, I suggest you go and check it out because it was special. It was against this lot here, go by the name of Checkers. They've uh, struggled this season, second from bottom, but they're not actually a bad side, especially when this geezer's playing. You are right, Laurie? I said hello. You ran out your pants. Anyway, it's that time of the season, isn't it, where injuries just start kicking in. Add Tony to the injury list. Hopefully, he'll be back soon with some important games coming up. As we talk about the team, should we give you one for today? Let's do that. And in between the sticks. It's going to be good, isn't it? Tomo. It's a back four of Webby, Elliot, Foxy, and Henners. And just for context, Webby got sent off last week. Well, last week's upload. This game you're about to watch happened before that. So uh, hopefully that clears things up. Into the midfield, we've got Ethan, Tommy's next door neighbour, Kev, and Callum Palmer. Just ahead of them, Mr. Callum Bloss. And on his own, up top, it's not Big Bill Tex. He's injured as well. Instead, it's Lewis. Not much to come off the bench, especially when one of them's injured. It's new signing Nick. And then we've got Big Josh too. Now, obviously, you've seen the title. Many of you have seen it on the socials as well. In case you didn't know, we uh, sadly lost one of the greatest players to ever Put on an orange shirt for us. We may have just lost last week because you weren't there. Why is it always my fault? Because you're the you're, you're the talisman. <laughs> Sunday, so don't don't panic. Don't All right, panic. good right. boy, good boy. Kieran, that's gold for a reason, boy. It's gold for a reason. <laughs> So yeah, it's been it's been pretty tough. But rather than standing in silence, we want to think back and uh, we want to celebrate his life. So it's going to be a minute's applause. So we actually laid Kieran to rest a few days before uploading this video that you're seeing now. And uh, yeah, a really emotional day. Um, lots of friends and family there. Plenty of uh, players he's played with and against over the years too. Really good turnout for the lad. We got to do some really nice things about him uh, when he was growing up. Some funny stories as well. And after speaking to his family on the day, they were absolutely blown away by the support that you guys showed as well online through the uh, video that we uploaded. And I was trying to explain to them that it actually didn't take too long to make. That's not because it was a rush job. It's because Kieran stood out to me. And I remember all of the videos that he featured in. I remember all of his goals. I remember the times that he spoke on camera as well. And uh, it was so easy to just grab those clips and stick them together and put out there to obviously let you guys know about one of our players that had sadly passed away but as I say his family were blown away by it they really loved the video as well and it was uh, just being able to hear his voice and, and, and see him do what he loved and it really hit home that just by doing these videos we're not only creating memories but we're creating memories that we can cherish going forward unfortunately nothing's going to bring him back but we've got some good memories haven't we and this one not exactly a good memory but anyone remember his debut ah the old grey shirts and uh, he had white shorts and socks that day stood out like a sore 
thumb in this one. However, it wasn't his thumb that was sore in this. It was actually his ankle. But here is his first ever touch as a Palmer's SC player. That little flick around the defender there for Nolsey on the left. If that had gone in, instant assist. Here he is again. Good with the feet, wasn't he? But even better with the head. Interesting enough, this was back in 2015, Easter Sunday. The college was closed. And I remember we booked the pitch, but no one was there, obviously, to open up. So we all climbed over this gate. And looking back, it just shows how much we just wanted to play football. Both teams. And obviously, we got the game on, didn't we? And uh, I don't think the college was too happy with us after this. But um, yeah, Kieran here winning the free kick just about here. And uh, it was that free kick which led to this. The ball in towards Kieran. He jumps the highest, but just... Ouch. What's that? You didn't see that the first time. Let's have a closer look. Slow down. So as you can see, all of that weight comes down on that ankle and crunch. Horrific. Worrying signs for the young lad as an ambulance is called as we put him behind the goal to try and get as comfortable as possible. Obviously, the problem we had was we snuck into this place and uh, the ambulance couldn't get in. In the end, they had to hoist him onto this fence. They had to catch him on the other side. Kieran, welcome to Palms FC. <laughs> I'll put some more memories of Kieran up in a bit, but uh, back to this game. Five minutes in, it's uh, checkers have actually started the better as this ball comes into the box. Tomo being called into action early on. He catches it. That's that's all we need from him. Are they ever now? Lewis latches onto this ball here around the halfway line as he puts it forward to Ethan as Ethan picks that up Lucy's going to try and get around him on the overlap uh, Ethan uses him can he get a foot on it though oh. We haven't really got started in this one, to tell you the truth. We've uh, been giving away needless fouls. Kev, I'm talking about you. Yep, Lewis, I'm talking about you too, mate. And on the 16th minute, they made a sub. This guy and someone else as well. And there he is, head and shoulders above Elliot. He's massive. He goes by the name of Laurie, and he's the greatest Sunday league footballer I've ever witnessed. In the last game, half hour had gone, and he'd already got a hat-trick. But today, he's just got on the field, which means around half-time, he should have that hat-trick, right? We do have off days, though. It's important to realise that as the ball's picked up by Laurie here. Shoots from distance. They can go in, but this one has sailed over the bar. And I genuinely think, yeah, I'm about to compare Laurie to Ronaldo, but listen, I'm all for it. But you know when Ronaldo does have a good game for United and they just play through him and it just doesn't work. I think this is what happens to Checkers. They've got some good players on their team so maybe they'll share the responsibility going forward. But from this free kick, a little bit of shoving, a little bit of argy-bargy and I've got to say this referee has been very strict today. Very strict. One punch and you're off. One punch. I mean, you're <laughs> yeah, one punch, lads, and you're off. As opposed to the two or three that we normally allow. I'm not in the mood today, mate. Just your one punch and you're out of here. Anyway, we've got this free kick. Ethan puts both arms in the air. Don't know what that means, but he's hit it up to the back post. Maybe that's what he meant. Lewis is on the end of it. That goes wide. Or over. Maybe over. Kieran has scored that, just like in our first ever cup final. Actually, looking back, his first ever competitive goal for us was on the first day of that season, the 2015 season. Not with his head, though. Right peg from outside the box against rivals Thames Gateway. And it's worth noting that Kieran's first competitive season with us was the year we actually won our first ever trophy. League title, wasn't it? <laughs> Meanwhile, seven years on, we've got cramp after 28 minutes. As we move on from that, his checkers have come forward here up to the number 11. He looks up, and he's only looking for one man, of course, isn't it? It's Laurie in that far corner there as that ball goes over Elliot's head. As he picks that up, he keeps the ball in as he uh, goes to go on the outside, but then on the inside, puts it across. It's missed as it's a free shot from the 11. Last touch off the eight. Yeah. And just like that, we go 1-0 down in this one. It was uh, Laurie's ball here, which came across. Obviously, it was missed. Uh, 11, who put the ball over to Laurie originally, got the shot in. But there was the number eight to help it in. I'll take it back. Despite being set up by Laurie, they can score without him. It's Palmer's FC nil. Checkers FC 1. And so we kick off and Kev just wants to get up close and personal with Laurie. Any excuse for a quick smooch. <laughs> Unnecessary? I don't know. I mean, given the opportunity, I'd probably give him a peck on the cheek and all. But look at this first half. Probably the worst we played all season. Considering it's the league, it doesn't really mean anything for both teams, but Checkers really want this one. They defend it from the front as Laurie hits this one from distance and uh, once again it goes over the bar. So 1 0 down in this first half and uh, Checkers controlling this game. It's got to be said, they're not a team that look like they're uh, second from bottom of the league. As you can see, they're always looking over that far side for Laurie to get involved. Up until now, the shooting boots haven't been on as he cuts inside of Elliot, and they're still not on as well. Tomo, easy save for him there. And despite Laurie's efforts not really affecting the game right now, they're still looking for him. They still trust him. Maybe he's having a bit of a Bill Tex day today. Maybe it takes about five or six chances to actually hit the back of the net. And that's all right. If you score, you're fine. And uh, here's another chance for him. Not affecting Tomo once more. He'll be happy with that. Just before half time, they come forward again. Absolutely bossed this half they have. So fair play to them. And uh, obviously, the ball has come out to Laurie as he goes over the halfway line. Different challenge to get past this time. Hennis isn't slow, is he? Laurie's just quicker. <laughs> And that, my friends, was the final chance of the half. It's still only 1-0, but we have played so, so poor. We haven't really created anything at all. We're going to get anything out of this game. We need to pick things up, don't we? In the meantime, make sure you drop a like and hit that subscribe button for any new videos coming out. Um, our next video out will be our cup final, the Brentwood Senior Division League Cup Final against Sungate. That particular game is on Thursday, 21st of April, 7.45 kickoff at Brentwood Town Football Club. If you're in the area, come on down, support the lads. Five to get in for adults, kids go free. Anyway, something needs to change in the second half. Let's hope it does. <laughs> Unfortunately, two and a half minutes into this second half, nothing's really changing. Check are still at it, looking like they want this more. And if we carry on like this, uh, we could be in trouble, actually. Yeah. 
<laughs> can't believe it, but we've gone 2 0 down. Actually, I can't believe it. We've got what we deserved here. A little bit of a mess in the end at the back, wasn't it? But number seven drove into the box, eventually got it across. And I think it ended up going through Tomo's legs. Foxy was in there, Henners was in there, the 11 stuck his leg in. I think it came off of the post and back in. And uh, yeah, just like that, it's 2 0 to the checkers. And so, kick off. And obviously, when you need a win, there's no better man to have on your side. Of course, it's Kieran, one of the best videos we've ever made, to be fair. And uh, we went 3 0 up in this one. He went home to get his asthma pump. We told him in that time we conceded 3. It's actually 5 0 at this point. I'll let you enjoy the rest. It's 3 3. Tell him it's 3 0. He thinks it's 3 0. So we're back with 11 on the field as Kieran picks the ball up. And there's an urgency about him. Obviously, he's the only one out there that thinks it's 3 0 as Lewis puts him in here. One on one with the keeper. Three yes! 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 <laughs> Love it. He's got us back in the lead. That's Palmer's FC4, Little Fork Lions 3. Or so he thinks. As you know, it's actually 6-0 now. I'm giving Kieran a fake score and actually seemed to work. In the first half, he was sitting back. But knowing he'd gone home, we were playing with 10 men. He thought he'd take matters into his own hands and really push forward here, even though he's got a bit of a chest infection at the moment. What a hero, Kieran. For anyone that's very much confused right now, the score is definitely 6-0 to Palmer's FC. What a guy. What a guy. Back to this game, though. One of my favourite things to see is Foxy just running with the ball, giving the ball. He's gone past one. He's gone past another. As he makes his way over the halfway line, he's going to go past the next one. Just like Kieran would have done. He's taking matters into his own hands. Unfortunately, that through ball to Lewis there is cut out. It's out to the number seven, but Callum Palmer's on him. It's nice to see we're showing a little bit of fire. Lewis has got the ball now. Callum on the overlap. Gives it to him. As he picks it up, he's uh, going to look to go beyond the number seven. Does that. And then... Like I always say, something always happens on the hour mark. And if it doesn't, there's still something happening. So, uh, penalty here. Bossy steps up, puts it past the keeper. 2-1, we're back in the game. Kick off. A few minutes later, we've got our tails up. It's big Josh forward to Ethan here. He's brought down. It's going to be a free kick. Ethan stands over it and into the box it goes. On the end of it is a big Josh. Heads down. Lewis. Yes! What a Unreal. What a fucking and there you go. That's all it takes. Five minutes to uh, get your heads down. And we're back in this game. Great delivery from Ethan. Big Josh hung up high there to put it into the path of Lewis. Simple tapping. You won't score an easier goal. And just like that, it's Palmer's FC 2. Checkers FC 2. Big off. But we can't forget that our opponents have played well today. They will be dangerous. And uh, it's number eight here. Skipping past Elliot. Puts it through to Laurie. Oh, no. Oh, no. Great save. Great save. Tom over the save, it stays 2 all. That was Laurie's last action in this game. It's, it's not gone his way today, unfortunately. Although I do remain his biggest fan. Moving forward, let's talk about Blossy. Haven't really been involved, other than the penalty, of course. He sparks into life here as he turns his man, hits that with the left. Keeper can't hang on to it. And check is clear. But this game has completely been turned on its head now. It is all Palmers. We're gonna go for this win, I think. Blossy involved again as he looks to get onto his left. Blue shirts crowding around him, but he's found a gap. Oh. Stinger of a shot, that one, as uh, Checkers clear once more. Our pressure continues, though, as Lewis loops this one into the box. On the end of it is Big Josh, but last touch came off a blue shirt, and that one goes out for the corner. All I'm thinking right now is if only we could have a ginger head on the end of this. On the end of it is Kieran. Yes. 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 Get up here. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> well, we did ask for a ginger head, and uh, one of the smaller players on the pitch rose high, got his nut on it, and even Kieran would have been proud of that one. We have literally turned this game on its head. 2 0 down, 3 2 up, Palmer's FC. And so, kick off. Callum's been getting a bit of stick for his celebrations from the sideline. And who can forget when Kieran got a bit of stick from the sidelines? Such a nice guy. Didn't take crap from no one, though, did he? For some reason, number seven's not happy with Mike and squares up to him. The ref allows the game to carry on as Jerry makes his way onto the pitch. Kieran's now broke those two up, but now Jerry's giving Kieran a bit of abuse, and he turns around and gives him some friendly advice. Good game this one actually. A young big Josh put Moss ups into the lead. There was 62 minutes gone. Cushion pass from Mike into the path of Nick. He was there to square things up. With a few minutes left, Elliot picked up a loose ball, stuck it through, and who's on the end of it? Our man, number 11. Go on! Yes! yes! Get in there! <laughs> Back to this one. It looks like Laurie's come back on the field. I didn't think we'd see him again. But here he is after this ball was put over the top. He's going to look to take on Elliot. Laurie needs to focus on his game, not build Texas. <laughs> Into the 90, Webby, who's now suspended the course, is uh, making his way forward. Number three goes through the back of him there. Nothing given from the referee as the game carries on. There's Callum Palmer looking to track back. Tommy's next to neighbours on it as well. Little flick from him over to Callum as he uh, makes his way towards the byline. Game management and all that. But number three, after taking Webby out, seems a bit angry. <laughs> Luckily, nothing came of it, and he's the final kick. Yeah! Great turnaround in the end from the boys, wasn't it? It's probably my favourite moment, though. Which one's the commentator? Um, 
on the thing. My old girl loves you, mate. Oh. <laughs> so another win in the league, unbeaten in 2022. We turned things around in this game and we've really turned things around this year as well, haven't we? Because of that, we've got a chance to lift silverware on Thursday, but of course it won't be easy as we take on Sungate, league winners this year. This particular game didn't really have much hanging on it, but come Thursday, hopefully we can lift some silverware for Kieran. Simply a fantastic player. We were lucky to have him. Rest in peace, mate. Get in there! Yeah. <laughs>